Welcome to the Terminal Value Podcast. Uh, we have Vikens Moskova with us today, and he is going to be talking with us about the importance of a personal brand. Uh, and just speaking for myself, uh, uh, I've actually found that kind of in the uh, in the current world, uh, creating a personal brand is actually, I think, more important than it really ever has been, uh, just because the... Um, not just the not, not just the internet per se, you know that's uh, that, that's so you know 1999 is talking about the internet, but uh, it's you know but just the um, the fact that the whole world's gone virtual uh, in the COVID era uh, has really meant that if all you have is a job description, there's really nothing to differentiate you from anybody else. Um, that you know, uh, Vikings, don't let me don't don't let me t- uh, steal your thunder here, but uh, but yeah, that's uh, I, I feel like it's a really relevant topic, and I'm really looking forward to hearing your insights. Definitely, definitely. Hi, my name is Vikens Moskova, and I help brands expand their reach on social media using uh-huh. like Facebook and Instagram. Uh, yep. So I've been working in the field for a while, so I've understood how the growth of social media has kind of created the foundation for people to even have brands and have their own followings that they can use for whichever means that they need fit. But mm-hmm. due to a lot of circumstances such as COVID and other things that have kind of brought people at home and in front of their computers or whatnot more directly and more frequently. Um, and also jobs moving away from offices for many different reason, reasons, including COVID. Um, having your own brand to supplement what you do at work um, definitely can be helpful, yeah. whether it be you starting a course um, that you can expand on, or even if you have the time writing a book or even an ebook. Um, so these are some of the things I help my clients with. Well, and can you tell us about uh, some of the ways that, uh, that, that you monetize your brand? So like, for example, um, you know, a lot of people would say, okay, if I write a book, well, I'll, I may, may sell a few copies, but it's probably not going to be a giant money maker. And most likely you're right. You know, there, it's possible that one of us might be the next JK Rowling, but it's very unlikely. Uh, you know, however, something like a book is actually really, really helpful in generating credibility and authority uh, so that if you're in any kind of sales capacity, whether you're selling your services as a consultant or um, you know, whether you're getting somebody to say to hire you for a particular scope of work, just having that authority and credibility can just be a real differentiator. Uh, can you unpack that a little bit for us? Yeah, definitely. Uh, Approximately 90% of uh, writers that put books out um, independently um, don't have much success. So you're definitely right about that. Um, Most of the ones, writers that have the most success usually go through a a publisher's uh, house or whatnot um, and have a literary agent um, to help them create uh, such a deal and have the marketing um, to back up and uh, to the deal so that they can get a uh, the most out of that their book. Um, so there's many ways to monetize if you know you're not your plans aren't to get with a publisher or whatnot. But that's definitely the most recommended way. Um, a lot of people are using ebooks or books as their calling cards or their uh, cards, yeah. and they give them out instead of like a, a, a card, and it replaces that. And, and like you say, it gives you more authority and wisdom, mm-hmm. and it makes you more trustworthy in front of that client or potential client. Um, but along with um, building your br- your brand, uh, just having that following um, yeah. and that understanding of marketing and PR already on board already gives you a platform and customers and potential buyers of a, a product or service that you may be putting out in the future. So it, it definitely uh, makes sense to invest in that and to kind of think it through and plan it out uh, strategically. Well, and uh, and so kind of unpacking marketing and PR a little bit. Uh, tell us a little bit about uh, you know, of course, right? You know, a lot of us people think about marketing in terms of advertising, although that's just really a piece of marketing. Uh, but you know, what are some of the aspects of marketing and public relations that are actually really important? You know, spent, I mean, particularly for entrepreneurs, but also for executives as well, because you know, if you're running a company and you're trying to, you know, and you're you're, you're trying to invest in uh, in sales enablement effectively, uh, knowing what how to manage marketing and PR the right way is actually really important. Yeah, that's exactly why I, I put out a course um, on, uh, it's actually at muscovacademy.thinkific.com, where it will enable the person that is not marketing privy um, to understand the foundational um, 
theories and uh, and ways that us as marketers um, utilize all these tools that are in existence now, say a Facebook or Instagram, or things that are, are coming about in the future more or more prevalent ways, such as um, audio on um, a Spotify green room uh, or a clubhouse, um, yeah. to even podcasting, which is has been blowing up over the years. Um, so there's uh, numerous ways to actually um, market a brand and put mm -hmm. yourself out there. Um, but it really uh, depends on how much time you have and a budget uh, that you also have uh, to suffice that. Um, because, you know, again, uh, the reason I put the course out is so that you can actually make the right hires and know who's actually going to be able to produce um, and do what they say as far as uh, helping out with PR and marketing. Um, but there's just so many different tools out there. Just, you know, for example, in PR, um, there's things like Harrow or um, Podmatch, which enables people to connect with reporters or podcasters. Um, and just adding these tools into even your marketing department repertoire um, will enable them to help you to make better business decisions by giving you better data and having uh, more direct ways to uh, ask the clients, potential clients, questions about a product or service you may have now that may be doing good or may not be doing good or a future product that you may want to uh, do some analysis um, with your um um, uh, client potential clients yeah gotcha well and and just so that people uh, who are uh, listening or watching uh, know uh, when you said uh, I assume that when you said Haro you meant help a reporter out uh, which is a database yeah. of uh, content experts who, uh, who reporters and press agencies can go to uh, to be able to get interviews right right um, so there's things like that, uh, Podmatch, which connects podcasters yeah. and people I want to get on. Which I believe LinkedIn. is actually how we got connected. Right, right. And then there's Audrey.io as well, which basically does the same thing. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Well, let's see. So um, let's kind of let's go down the rabbit hole just a little further. And what are some of the things that you've seen, uh, particularly in terms of like, say, the marketing PR hacks? Uh, you know, in other words, uh, and I, I don't want to make it sound like it's, uh, you know, like it's some kind of deep, dark secret because it really isn't. But it's just what are some of the, the shortcuts or the things that uh, most people either don't know or don't do that can have a really exceptionally good benefit? Um, to believe it or not, a lot of people do, don't have their pages public. They have them private. <laughs> Um, or they don't have a bio that explains what they do or links to their website. Mm -hmm. um, and then if you go onto their website, it may not be professional looking. So you definitely want to make sure your website looks like it was a Ford or, or a SanDisk website, uh, you know, so it's high level. Um, and th that's also something that I do uh, as well. If you go to MuscovaEnterprises.com, mm -hmm. um, check out some of our uh, websites. Um, but those are some of the basic things. But then uh, also, like, uh, we, we never realize um, often that these social media networks are often competing with each other yeah. if they're not owned by the same company. For example, Facebook does own Instagram, but Instagram stories has been competing um, with uh, things like uh, YouTube shorts or Twitter, uh, which created uh, a way to create short uh, video. And all these things are, are competing with each other. So Whenever you do post your uh, story or your reel on Instagram, uh, which is competing with all those other ones, uh, you're able to get higher views than if you were just to post a regular post or just a regular uh, story or whatnot. Um, and the same thing goes with the, like a, a YouTube or, or um, a Twitter or whatnot, because these these social networks are looking to get you on there, to posting content, getting their views up so then they can create more advertising dollars um, and make their uh, constituents that um, invest in them happy. Uh, so understanding the backdrop can kind of give you a strategy for your own marketing. Mm -hmm. Well, and uh, Doug works with schools, businesses, and nonprofits to optimize their costs without layoffs. The best part is that he is only paid for successful projects, so you have zero risk. To learn more, visit DougBusiness.com or schedule time to talk about your business at meetdoug.biz. 
Well, and uh, I, I'm going to go into a, uh, you know, I, I'm going to go into a little bit of a rant that has a purpose behind it. Um, so the the rant is uh, is that um, when when you were talking about social media, the thing you have to understand is that uh, for social media, especially at least in my view, especially Facebook, uh, social media like Facebook and Twitter. Uh, I think LinkedIn, at least thus far, fingers crossed, seems to keep things fairly professional. Uh, YouTube, yeah, 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 we'll see. Um, but, uh, but especially social media like Facebook and Twitter, they are specifically designed to maximize the amount of views and clicks that something generates. Um, and so what that ultimately ends up meaning uh, is that if you are looking to be really, to, to be high trending on either of those, uh, you will you will unfortunately in a lot of cases uh, you know, need to uh, you know, need to venture into the, con- the, the the territory of controversy or at least that's my observation. It's not empirical. I'm sure there's people who have been very middle of the road have been successful, but everything I see that trends is in is involved in controversy one way or the other. Um, and so now that may or may not be the brand you're trying to create, uh, but that is one of the things to consider is that if you are looking to leverage fa- uh, things like Facebook and Twitter uh, to really get a lot of exposure, uh, you're going to need to build your brand so that it is so that it can capitalize on controversy, or at least that's my observation. Let, let me know your thoughts. Um, that or um, other uh, types of trends that may be um, going off. Um, I know a lot of people are afraid of things like TikTok um, because they feel like they have to always dance or do something like you say, controversy or try to be funny on it. Um, And a lot of those things work because they get into the psyche of the human uh, Mm -hmm. being on the other end of that phone or video or whatnot. Um, So so that's that's the idea behind getting people emotional behind a controversy and getting likes and clicks. But there's a ton of other ways to get people um, emotional, um, you know, in different ways without um, creating some type of controversy or or risking putting your company. Well, actually, that's uh, that's really good. Kind of help, you know, help help elevate my worldview. So uh, in in your experience, what are some of the uh, what are some of the. the other ways to really get people emotionally attached, because I think there's something you hit on that's really important there, uh, which is that no matter what you're trying to influence, right? You know, whether you're say like a B2C kind of business to consumer kind of business, or even if you're business to business, right? Even if you're going after say corporate decision makers uh, who you think, okay, you know what? They're all going to be pretty dry, pretty factual, but even, you know, even in the case of say corporate executives, they're still human beings. And so if you can connect with them on an emotional level, you still have a much better chance of getting them to engage. Um, so, uh, so here, uh, take it away. Uh, uh, help us, uh, help us figure out how can we be those high ethics social media people uh, that, that get folks to engage without just being, uh, you know, without just being scandal monitors. Um, there, there's a ton of ways um, where uh, companies are using their whole um, social enterprise as uh, yeah. ways to um, connect with brands um, and usually involves around uh, charity or mm-hmm. like, again, something funny. Um, uh, But a lot of uh, companies like, uh, for example, um, I've done work with a charity in Haiti called uh, Fun Jose, Mm -hmm. um, which creates uh, businesses for uh, people in Haiti, um, but also um, is able to be on the ground to assist during the things like the earthquakes, the most recent one or whatnot. Um, And then there's the bigger brands that are able to really take hold and affect um, work to affect change like Ben and Jerry's, for example, yeah. um, which decided to stop selling um, its ice cream in uh, areas around uh, Israel where there is uh, controversy around um, what's happening with the Palestinian Israel people. So that may be going um, a, bit, a bit big of an example, but um, there's, there's, there's many ways to range on how you use your social enterprise to um, affect change. Uh, uh, excellent. Uh, well, I mean, and that's uh, really, really excellent points. Uh, well, let's see. So, uh, so give us a uh, give us a couple more nuggets, and then uh, let us know where we can find out more. Uh, let us know your website so that uh, pe- you know if people have a list or a newsletter they can subscribe for, uh, so that they know where to find you. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, 
I'm on Instagram at uh, V M O S C O V A, which is Nima Scola, mm-hmm. or um, the full service digital marketing companies. Um, Instagram is MoscovaEnterprises.com. And from there, you can check out uh, different services that we uh, help people out as far as the social media posting, uh, advertising, uh, Facebook, Instagram, Google, YouTube, uh, SEO, okay. website building. Um, but also uh, the course that we have popping off right now, which is I'm really excited about because people are really wanting to understand how they can even use um, marketing these days um, to affect their brands or their, uh, yeah. or their own uh, digital enterprises. So we've been able to uh, help people out with that. And that's been really successful at MoscovaAcademy.Thinkific.com. Um, but as far as uh, building your brand and and utilizing what's on the future, you really have to make sure that you have uh, allocated time or delegated um, to people that you can trust and believe in to assist with you. Um, As you uh, endeavor into these marketing worlds and all these different tools that are coming about, Um, because as you work to create content, it becomes another task that you have to really do either in the beginning of the week or daily. Um, so making sure that you have a good team around you is definitely important and understanding how to delegate um, to the right people is definitely imperative and something that um, I teach my clients how to do all the time. Um, so these yeah. are some of the things I feel are pretty important. Well, and I think that's uh, that's actually uh, one of the things that I think is really critical is because social media, if you're not careful, it can burn up all of your time. Uh, and so it's actually really, really important to make sure that you are uh, you know, that you're allocating your time wisely. And, you know, if you, if you determine that social media is ROI positive, uh, you know, for your business, then there's a good chance that, uh, um, you know, that it can be even more ROI positive for you if you bring in help as opposed to trying to do all the keystrokes yourself. Uh, just because, as you said, it takes a lot of time. Right. Those expertise will save you dollars in the long run. We all know about sometimes yeah. paying a little bit more for quality. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, hey, I really appreciate your uh, spending some time with us today. And I hope you have an, uh, an excellent remainder of your day and week. Thanks, Doug. It was a pleasure. Have a great day. All right. Day. Outstanding. Thank you very much for listening to today's episode. Uh, and what I would actually like you to do right now is to give me your thoughts. So I would really love it if you could go to feedback.terminalvaluepodcast.com. Uh, and just let me know what you think. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know uh, if, you, if there's anything you really like about the show, if there's any questions you have, or if there's anything you think I could do better. Uh, once again, that site is feedback.terminalvaluepodcast.com. I'm really looking forward to hearing your thoughts and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you for listening to the Terminal Value Podcast. Share it with your friends by sending them to terminalvaluepodcast.com. For more information, please visit Business of Life LLC.com for full access to Doug's products and services. All rights reserved. No part of this broadcast may be produced in any form by any means without written permission from Business of Life LLC. All trademarks and brands referred to herein are the property of their respective owners.